introduction, so over to Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This decision, Mr Mayor, in moving the amendment has put, which is the same ethos as was originally proposed by the Labour, Party, Labour Group on this, reaches beyond this chamber and it does affect thousands of residents. We have the power in the chamber tonight to either put many people into crisis in April or to take a more sensitive and human option being taken by so many other councils up and down this country to hold the council tax benefit and discount regime as it is for one year, just like Hart, without any protest from the Hampshire County Council, just like the Prime Minister's own authority of West Oxfordshire, which is holding it for a full year. The chairman of the local government association, Sir Merrick, Co Sir Merrick Cockle, conservative leader of Kensington, has said that we feel a rushed implementation of a new scheme might lead to penalising claimants who already go out into work. We want a better scheme that understands the real financial circumstances of people, that appreciates that in April the people the cabinet have currently targeted for a 30% increase in their council tax bills will also be hit with reductions in housing benefit, child working tax credits, and so on. I'd like to ask members to look at Appendix D of the report and at each of the scenarios. I know families and households that will fall into those scenarios. I know families struggling to keep a roof over their heads with part-time jobs that are topped up with income support, council tax benefit, and housing benefit. Many hundreds of the households affected will be single-parent families whose losing benefit will make a difference between work paying and falling below the breadline. I know that even a 100% increase on top of all of the other changes coming in in April will push some of those over the edge. We know that nearly 90% of all the people claiming housing ta council tax benefit also get housing benefit. What do you do with one scheme directly affects the others? What happens to the cumulative impact of these changes in April will potentially break people. And our officers have confirmed that next year some households in these very scenarios, based on this paper, based on these figures, will face up to a cumulative £930 cut in their income and support, made worse by the decision we choose to take tonight. We know that the majority of the 3,339 working age households affected by this decision are on low incomes, many between £11,000 and £15,000 a year. That's why they qualify for support in the first place. So if you hit them with cuts of up to £500 to £1,000 in one whammy, why wouldn't anybody find it difficult to budget for? That is such a crass statement. People need to budget better. Losing that amount of your income in one hit will mean arrears, money worries, and likely evictions for many people. How many in this people, how many people in this room know what living off of £11,000 a year is really like in this current economic crisis? And if, you, and if you do know, then you know how much this is so wrong, how wrong this scheme currently is. The suggestion is that don't worry because we're going to phase it. Don't worry, the problem is 8% and a half April coupled with other cuts, we'll move it on to 20% and then 30%. It will make it worse year on year if we don't tackle the more real issue of understanding the financial circumstances of these people. A blanket, one-size-fits-all policy will not work here. People on low income are facing choices over heating their home or putting food on the table or whether the part-time job actually really pays. And that's the point of this whole issue. Our amendment holds the line for 15 months and gives our officers time to work with housing partners on understanding how those affected families and households are going to be hit. And we can design a scheme that is far more sensitive and flexible to reflect the real life of what people are genuinely facing. The finance officers have examined our proposal and have told us that it adds up. There's nothing financially wrong with what we are proposing. Our council's contribution would be £14,000 next year. The county, well, they've got £200 million in their reserves. You're not telling me they could not afford to find this either. And they have not stopped Hart taking this decision. They have not stopped Hart one inch and Hart are holding the line for the next 15 months to do exactly that, to do the research required. Councillor Harvey, half a minute. Thank you. While we're on the subject, next lot forget the money that we have in this council. If we say we can't find 14 grand... We can find 15 grand for the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra to come down to the Anvil and play every year. We can find 75 grand to try and sell Parklands again. We can find money 
for the things the administration want to do. We want to hold the line for a year to better understand those families who are on the breadline, who are working, who will be hit by this if we go ahead with it too much, too quickly, too soon in April next year, and will fall below the breadline and will be pushed to breaking point. So, Councillor so Harvey, members, Councillor I really Harvey, ask you to support the amendment. Over. And in closing, may I say one final thing, Chair, yes. Mr Mayor, that our partners, the CAB, Sovereign, all of them, Sentinel, in the report, make it clear they do not support the administration's line on this. They feel strongly it will have a negative impact on our communities.